This is lesson 5.6, Analyzing Logarithmic Functions. In this lesson, we'll focus on how we can use technology to graph transformations of these logarithmic functions. Uh, the first note that I have right here says, to use technology to evaluate a logarithm with a base other than 10, the base of the logarithm must be changed to 10. So we're going to explore how we can go and do that. All right. So let's first start out with the logarithms the way we, we know it. Um, if we have log of base b of x like so. What I want to do right here, because we're saying that this is a, a base other than 10, is I want to, so I'm going to write kind of notes over here on the right hand side, is I want us to write this in exponential form. Okay, so if we write that in exponential form, I think you'll recall how this works. If you take b and you raise it to the power of something, in this case y, so b to the power of y, that'll equal x, like so. Okay. Now at this stage what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the common log of both sides. So it just means on both sides of my equation I'm going to take the common log, so log of base 10, so log of by is equal to log of x. All right. Next what I can do from there is I'm going to apply the power law to the left side, of course, where the power is. Okay. So right there, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the y, I'm going to put it in front of our log. So we have y log b is equal to log x. All right. And so remember what I'm trying to do right here is I was trying to get away from this being a different um, base of b to just be um, uh, base 10, right, the common log. And so now you can see probably the last thing that I have to do in order to isolate for y, just like I had at the beginning right here, is I'm just going to have to go and divide both sides by log of b. So that's what I'll do right here. Divide both sides by the log of b. All right. And so when you do that, we have finally y is equal to log of x, all divided by the log of b, okay? And then finally, we can say that this, of course, is going to be equal to, so I'm just going to sub in where we started, sub log of base b of x in 4y. And so when you do that, you get what we have right here. So I'm just basically saying take this and put it into this y, and we have the rule that we just proved right here, okay? So whenever you're given a log of base b of x, you can change it, so we're going to have log of x divided by the log of b, just like so, okay? So we're going to use this um, down here now in example one, just to show you how if you're given something like this, you can um, approximate the value um, by using your uh, calculator. All right, so example one says, approximate the value of each logarithm to the nearest thousandth. Write the related um, exponential expression, so we'll do that at the very end. So uh, according to the rule that we just uh, dealt with, we can say that when you have a log base 5 of 50, we can rewrite that as the common log of 50 divided by the common log of 5. One of the most common mistakes um, I'll see from students right here is that we can, uh, we can reduce this as being, um, just change this to be log of uh, 10, right, 50 divided by 5, um, but those uh, indeed are not equivalent. So if we grab our calculator right now, so I'll bring up my calculator, and we take the log of 50, and we divide it by the log of 5, like so, we get approximately 2.4306, right, it keeps on going. All right. So what does that mean? That means that we can say that the log base 5 of 50 is equal to approximately this 2.4306. Okay. And then it did say that it wanted you to express it as an exponential expression. So we know that if you have 50, we can set that equal to 5 to the power of 2.4306, dot, dot, dot. Okay. So if you took 5 and you raise it to the power of 2 in a bit, um, that's going to give you 50. And if you think about that, that should make sense because 5 to the power of 2 is going to be 25. 5 to the power of 3 is 125, so it would have to be somewhere in between there, right, if we were to uh, estimate that. All right? So let's go and uh, deal with uh, b in the same way. So again, using our um, changing uh, the base of a logarithm rule that we just uh, went over, we can express this as log, uh, the common log of 6 divided by the common log of uh, 8. And uh, if we go and do this one with our calculator, uh, we will have log of 6 divided by the log of 8. And we are looking at 
8616, and it keeps on going. So we can express this as the log of base 8, 6 is uh, equal to approximately 0 0.8616. And um, it goes on to say that we could uh, write an exponential form that 6 is equal to 8 to the power of um, that number that we're finding right there. Okay, And understand that that number that I'm writing right there is not um, exact, that's just an approximation. Okay, So we've shown how we can um, use our calculator um, in order to approximate the value of these uh, logarithms. Okay, so example two here says uh, use technology to graph y is equal to log base 8 of x. Then identify the intercepts, the equation of the asymptotes of the graph, and the domain and range. So the first thing, that's what this lesson is really all about, is if you're going to use technology to do this, you have to put it in terms of the common logarithm base 10. So I'm going to take y is equal to log base 8 of x, and I'm going to rewrite that as y is equal to log of x, all divided by the log of 8. Okay, and then the information that they're looking for right here is that I need to find my intercepts. So I'll just set this up. I'll just put intercepts because there may only be one. Um, the equation of the asymptotes and my domain and my range. Okay, so these are the different things that we're going to have to go and tackle. And again, um, this is going to be one of those situations where we're going to go and um, use Desmos in order to uh, get a look at what this graph looks like. Okay, So let's go over to uh, Desmos.com. Okay, so once you get into Desmos right here, you're going to see that uh, you might not be able to find where the logarithms are. They're hidden in here in the functions, and they're in the miscellaneous functions like so. And so we have a bunch of different logs. We just want the common log right here. So we're going to take log, and then we're going to substitute in a value of x, just like so. And then we're going to divide by and then we'll go back in and we'll get another log uh, log of uh, 8 like so okay and when you do this I'll just get rid of uh, this so we can see it a little bit nicer uh, we're gonna have a function that looks like so okay so um, what I will do right here is I will take a screenshot and we'll drag this over to our other page okay so now that we've uh, changed the base we put into Desmos we got what our graph looks like we've used our technology we can go and answer uh, these appropriate questions so what type of intercepts do we see? Well, the nice thing was that they gave us what that intercept is right there. Um, notice that these are going up by 2. Um, it shouldn't surprise us because remember that um, we will always have that intercept right there. It's just the opposite of when we uh, are taking an exponential equation like so. So we have an intercept at 1, 0 like that. Um, this graph, if you take a look at it, it's getting infinitely close to our x-axis right here. Um, it never crosses. That's why that line's kind of right on top right there. So we have a, a vertical asymptote, of course, at x equals 0. I know it looks like it's uh, flattening out right here, but that graph is always increasing in terms of our, our y values. Um, the domain and range, uh, again, should be relatively easy to see that we have x values that are positive. So we'll say that x must be greater than 0. It's not equal to 0 because it will never be on that line. And then the range, I, I said that it's going infinitely down, and this is indeed going infinitely up. So we have that y is a member of the, uh, the real numbers. Okay, so uh, let's uh, continue down here. Um, so right here, this note says transformations can be applied to the graph of a logarithmic function in the same way that we've explored earlier in this course. And so right here, you'll probably remember a table that kind of looked uh, similar to this. And um, the parts that I want to point out right here is um, this equation of the image graph right here, and also this uh, corresponding point. And so uh, for my students, you'll remember that we had this written uh, on the board in the back of a class right here. And I just want to show you how closely it was related. And so this is for um, the transformations that we were dealing with before. Our transformations kind of looked like this. We had y minus k was equal to a, and then we had our function. We had b, right? That was my horizontal um, stretch of compression. And then we had uh, x minus h. And so you'll see how very, uh, very similar this is. The h is still the same. The k is still the same. Only instead um, of this being, um, well, of course, it's a logarithm, but we have c in front. And then instead of the b, we have the d, like so. Okay. And the corresponding point was also kind of interesting because uh, you'll notice that we just switched values. So before, we had x divided by b uh, plus h. And then we had uh, a y plus k. And then, of course, because they have a different value for our b and our a, they've just replaced those values um, right here with the d and the c. Okay. So uh, the nice thing about dealing with these transformations is um, I think you're going to feel you're, you're going to feel pretty confident with this because we've we've dealt with this. So just because we're dealing with transformations involving logarithms, it still follows um, the same idea. So a relatively uh, quick lesson right here. 
Um, example three, what I want us to do is we're going to create a table of values for y is equal to log uh, base 2 of x. And we're going to see how um, that graph uh, is changed when we have y is equal to log base 2 of 2x minus 1. So we'll relate those two graphs, and um, you can see that something kind of interesting is going to happen um, in this case. Okay, So let's first start by um, getting some real estate down here and, uh, and drawing up these uh, table of values. Okay, So this is going to be for my first function, and then we'll have my second function over here. Uh, so we have the function, I'll write this one in blue, uh, y is equal to log of base uh, 2 of x. And over here we have y is equal to log of base uh, 2 of 2x minus 1. Now the one thing I would get you to realize is that this is the same thing, if you remember, as um, you're saying what um, value do you raise 2 to in order to get x. Well, 2 raised to the power of y, so 2 raised to the power of y is going to be equal to x. So when you make your table of values right here, you may find it um, useful to actually go and rewrite this in exponential form. Okay, so now that I've written this in terms of um, an exponential form right here, uh, 2 to the power of y is equal to x, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to work kind of backwards right here. I'm actually going to take my output values, my y's, and I'm going to write those in first as negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, and 3. And you're going to see that this is going to make it a little bit easier to generate this like over here. So if I have 2 raised to the power of negative 2, um, remember what it means when you raise something to the power of negative 2, it's just taking the reciprocal, so that is going to be 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 quarter. And then I'm going to take 2 and raise to the power of negative 1. That's just going to be 1 half. Anything raised to the power of 0 is just going to be 1. Uh, 2 raised to the power of 1 is 2. And then we're going to get 4 and 8 like so. So that's my first um, uh, table of values right here. Let's go and see how this one's going to change. So what I might get you to um, consider right here is that we can go and rewrite this uh, little equation right here as the following. So maybe I'll do this um, just kind of over here uh, in a different color. So... Uh, I don't know, let's use uh, green. So if I want, right, I can go and move this 1 to the other side of the equation. So this would now be y plus 1 is equal to log a base 2 of uh, 2x. Okay. So now that I've done that, that's going to allow you to generate what those different values are that we need. So I know that k is equal to, so that's my k right there, it's equal to negative 1. Okay. So now I can generate my c value. If you remember what c is, that's the value that's sitting right in front. Um, for our old transformations, that was my a value. Okay, D is the value, it used to be kind of B in, in terms of our other transformations, that's my B value is 2, and my H value, because we don't have anything in the brackets right here, that's just going to be 0 like so. Okay, So what should we um, expect to happen? Well, if we write our corresponding point like this, right, our corresponding point is going to be X divided by, and remember normally we'd go X divided by B, but in this case it's going to be D, so we have X over 2. And then we're going to um, add our h value, but since our h value is just 0, we're just technically going to add 0. And then over here, we're going to take our x value, and we're multiplying it by a, but in this case, it's, uh, we call it c. So it's going to be just um, x like so. Multiplied by c is just 1x. And then we're going to um, deal with our k, which is x minus 1. So now what we can do in order to generate our table of values, we have our x and our y. We're just going to use this little ordered pair. That's our corresponding point to figure out what's going on over here. So if we put in 1 quarter, 1 quarter divided by 2 is going to give us 1 eighth. Okay? And then if we put in negative 2 and we subtract 1, we have negative 3. Okay, good. Let's keep on going. If we put in 1 half, 1 half divided by 2 is 1 quarter. And then we have negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. Okay, and if I take the liberty of filling this in, we get the following ordered pairs. Now, the interesting thing is, and I don't know if you would have noticed this maybe until you go to the graph to actually graph these things, is that you see that these graphs are identical. If you take a look at my ordered pairs, you'll see that on this side we don't have 1 eighth, but if I wanted to keep going, I could have drawn 1 eighth and we would have gotten negative 3. But the ones that show up are definitely here and here. All of these points are the same. So we would say that these graphs right here coincide. All right, so they're on top of one another. And when we start exploring this lesson a little bit further in class, uh, we'll talk about why these graphs uh, indeed do coincide. But if I finish this up and I, I sketch these points, you'll see that we have the, uh, the following order of pairs. So at um, positive 1 eighth, remember we were at negative 3, so approximately right here. At 1 quarter, we were at negative 2. At 1 half, we were at uh, negative 1. And uh, of course, we're going through this order pair at 1, 0. 
and at uh, 2 we were at 1, and at 4 we were at 1, 2, 3, 4, we were at 2, like so. Um, and so if we kept this graph going, we could even go um, to 8, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, we're at 3. We get a graph that looks approximately like this, right? We would have our, our vertical asymptote right here again, um, but that's what would be our function, okay? So one little note that you might just want to write right here at the very end is that these graphs coincide, okay? They're just on top of one another. So um, that concludes this lesson. Um, the big thing is that when you're using technology, whether you're using Desmos um, or a graphing calculator of some sort, when you have something that's um, of a different base, a base B, we can express it as log of X um, divided by log of B, like so. All right, so that concludes this lesson.